Evening, Brother Tim. How is Jay doing? He's doing real well. I think Glad he, to hear it. He's out of um, quarantine now, I believe. I believe it's been 10 days. Okay, good, good. Laura Glad and, to hear it. Laura and the babies never got it so so far. So they're, they're awesome. Good. Thank God for that. <clears throat> We'll go ahead and get started singing. We're running a little bit late, so we'll get started. We're going to start with Nothing But the Blood, which is 511 in the 11th edition, and it's 557, I believe, in the 12th edition. 511 and 557. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other bound I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. For my pardon, this I sing, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Nor my cleansing, this my plea, nothing but the blood of Jesus. How precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Nothing can for sin atone. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Not a good that I have done. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. How precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other bound I know, nothing but the blood of Jesus. This is all my hope and peace, nothing but the blood of Jesus. This is all my righteousness, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other bound I know, nothing but the blood of Jesus. We're going to sing, let's see, Jesus, Blessed Jesus, which is 513 and 559, 513 in the 11th edition and 559 in the 12th. Jesus, Blessed Jesus. <coughs> My dear Jesus, Blessed Jesus, what a grand and gracious thing. Repeat that. I think I messed it up. <coughs> My dear Jesus, blessed Jesus, what a grand and gracious name! Oh, the gracious name of Jesus, what a thick and brilliant name! Oh, my Jesus. 
Try to sing Long Air of the Sun, <clears throat> which is 515 and 554 in the 12th edition. 515 and 554. <clears throat>
sing which is uh, 123 and 118 123 and 118 <clears throat> Thank you so much, uh, Brother Kevin, Sister Dana, and I saw Lois and 
Danny was giving thumbs up to somebody, so I know somebody else was there. So uh, we certainly appreciate uh, your effort in leading us in these hymns. So uh, we certainly are blessed by it. Uh, we'd like to welcome everyone to our worship service this evening. Uh, I hope and trust that uh, each one has uh, set, a set aside a time and thought about uh, and prayed for our time together, that we would uh, feel the moving of the Spirit about us, uh, that we would be refreshed and revived, uh, that we would hear this uh, message once again, as we've been singing every hymn stamps that message out that we have a risen Savior uh, that died for our sins, uh, that reconciled us to God. So uh, that's just good news, I must say. Um, we see in the second chapter of the book of Luke about those uh, shepherds that came and it says and it came to pass in the 15th verse before we get to our prayer list and it came to pass as the angels were gone away from them into heaven the shepherds said one to another let us now go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass which the Lord hath made known unto us so as we come uh, worshiping this evening uh, we hope and trust that we're able to worship and the things that the Lord has revealed unto us, that has made known unto us, just like he did to those shepherds uh, as they came to see Christ uh, in the manger. So uh, welcome once again. I'd like to welcome our uh, everyone, our visitors, our members, our visiting elders, uh, Elder Oots and Elder Nichols and Elder Carelock. So we're thankful for their uh, fellowship and friendship. Um, so as we go into our... Um, prayer list. Uh, we want to remember those that are sick and cast down. Of course, we want to remember those that are uh, overtaken with this uh, COVID disease. We pray the Lord's uh, healing power. Uh, remember our country, our leaders that stand in rule and authority over us, our military, our first responders be in prayer for them uh, constantly. Uh, continue to pray for uh, Brother Curtis's, uh, several of his family. Uh, Karen Poole, uh, she's at home. We mentioned last Sunday or Sunday. Uh, she was in uh, ICU in Chapel Hill with an aneurysm, brain aneurysm. She's at home uh, doing better as well as his aunt uh, Myrtle Tucker. So we hope and trust all is well with them. Uh, Jay Coley is doing, doing real well uh, and he's out of his 10 day quarantine. We're thankful to the Lord for that. Uh, he has had the COVID and as well as uh, Elder Carelock. Uh, Brother James said that he's doing much better, so we're thankful to God uh, for that. Um, that being said, Elder uh, Brammer, uh, we, we were told last week, I got an update about him. Elder Brammer is doing maybe a little better overall. His oxygen level is still low. Uh, now his wife is, uh, I think, getting ready to be tested or has been tested to see if she has it. Uh, she's uh, showing some symptoms. Um, Elder Oot's son, Jimmy, has been uh, exposed to it, so he's uh, taken a test today. So we're waiting those results, hope and trust that uh, uh, the Lord would uh, show mercy and protect there. Um, several others from uh, his part of the country. Uh, Gail Watson's got some upcoming surgery. Uh, Samantha Dallas, I believe, was taken to the ER as a result of uh, her COVID. Um, we mentioned Brother Ned Honeycutt was in the hospital this past week. Uh, he's had surgery. He's uh, come through surgery and is doing better. So we thank God for that. Remember Brother Ned, Sister Blanche. Um, uh, my friend Ken Anderson continues to recover well from his uh, broken clavicle. So we hope and trust the Lord would continue to watch safely over him. Uh, remember uh, Logan and Libby and their engagement. Um, Sister Lydia and Amanda and their upcoming um, deliveries. We hope and trust all would be well with them. Um, Teresa Long, remember her and her battle with cancer. Um, Elder Jason Adams, uh, remember him. He uh, has COVID. Not sure exactly how he's doing, but we want to remember him in prayer. Um, our, uh, our local folks here, we want to continue to remember Brother Gene, Brother Melvin, uh, Sister Ruth, uh, Brother Mike Goody. Sister Jewel, Sister Wanda, um, pray the Lord's continued blessing with them. Uh, Betty Rogers, continue to be in prayer for her. Uh, a few from 
Snow Creek, uh, Mary Catherine and Regina, uh, Sister Bess, uh, Brother Jonathan, Jay and Gay B. Dunn, the Eatons, Sister Merlin, uh, Sister Edna Hendricks. Um, my mom, uh, she has upcoming knee surgery, Lord willing, uh, February 15th. So we hope and trust all would be well with her uh, and all that would go well. Um, Okay, I think I may have gone through those. I know that there's more. That, that's a long list, but we know our God is uh, great, uh, that no one is omitted, uh, whether we omit or not. So we hope and trust that uh, the Lord would forgive us. Uh, Sister Leah, uh, Brother Mike said last week that uh, she was suffering from some sinus issues. So we uh, remember her in prayer, uh, as well as our aging elders, uh, Elder Smith, Elder Alston, Elder Helms, Elder Curley. Brother E.W. Hooven, Elder E.W. Hooven. Um, so uh, is there anyone else that we want to mention? Um, uh, I was reminded that um, we want to remember the Brinkles, uh, best cousin, Sister Merlin's nephew, which was uh, Mike was uh, killed in a traffic accident this past Friday. Um, so we want to remember that family uh, in his upcoming funeral to pray the Lord's comforting arms uh, would be a be about that family, be around them, and just uh, lift them up. Uh, they're near and extended family, so uh, want to remember them in prayer. Thank you for that reminder. Um, <clears throat> is there anyone else? Uh, Elder Oots, I think uh, last last week we mentioned uh, Brother Green that was going into surgery. How did that turn out, or did he go into surgery? I didn't get a complete update on that. Uh, okay. Brother Eddie. All righty. Okay, well, we'll continue to pray for him. Uh, pray the Lord's blessing and all that. Uh, is there anyone else that yeah, someone wants? Yeah, uh, yeah, the green. He's uh, He went in and had a, a pacemaker put in and doing real good, real good. So uh, thank you, good Lord, for that. Amen. Thank you, good Lord, for that. I'm glad he's doing well and uh, hoping not trust that uh, all would be well with that pacemaker. <clears throat> anyone else? We would like to uh, have an opening hymn. We're going to ask Elder Carlock if he'd have opening prayer and then followed by Elder Oots to uh, come and preach for us. Uh, we hope and trust that the uh, spirit which has stir each one of them up uh, with their prayer and with uh, the forthcoming preaching. So, uh, uh, Elder, uh, Brother Kevin, what number do you have for us to start us off? We turned a number. Uh... A Child of Hope, which is 352, and it's 121 in 12th edition. 352 and 121. To us a child of hope is born, to us a son is given. Him shall the tribes of earth obey, him all the hosts of him. Him shall the tribes of earth obey, him all the hosts of him. His name shall be the Prince of Peace, all Please bow with me. 
Our gracious Heavenly Father, we thank thee once again for the opportunity to assemble ourselves together in this capacity. Thank thee for the hearts of those who have been uh, drawn to this place. Thank thee for putting that desire in them and in us that we would come to worship thee, realizing there's no good thing in us except thou would put it there. Lord, we pray thy blessings on all those who are sick and afflicted. And uh, thank thee at this time for the recovery that we've experienced and that a considerable number have already experienced from this disease. Please be with those who are fighting it now, those who are yet to come down with it. Lord, we pray, especially as this service continues on in the next portion, that the preaching would be a blessing, Lord, from thee, that it would be in the power of the Holy Spirit, and that our minds would be prepared and ready to hear the things that are taught to us. Lord, we pray for this church, and not only for Meadow Creek Church, but for all the individual bodies that gather together across this world that meet in thy name. Lord, please bless them that they would stand for truth, that they would continue in love one for another, but most of all, love for thee. Lord, please forgive us for where we fall so short. Bless us to repent where we stand in need of repentance. Please bless us to turn, not just to anything, but turn to thee and follow after thee more closely in the future. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Elder Oots. May the Lord deliver you and bless you once again. We appreciate you being here. Uh, it's just a joy being here and hearing that little one say amen was worth worth my efforts of coming on tonight. Just thank the Lord. Thank the Lord for that. And uh, we don't want to miss uh, any special blessing the Lord gives us. And sometimes we have things that occur in our lives that we just look at and don't think very much about. And um, I think of the uh, scripture that tells us that this is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. That tells us that this day has been given to us by the grace of Almighty God and the mercy of God. And he's daily loaded us with benefits today and has filled our lives with so many wonderful things. And if we live our lives close to the Lord, we are allowed to see uh, so many beautiful things just in the, the little things that uh, many would call little, but are not little at all with our Lord. I uh, certainly had hoped that I'd get to hear tonight, but I'm not gonna spend a lot of time with that. I just, just pray for me that uh, the Lord would bless us for the time we might be before you. I appreciate so much the sweet prayer that's already been offered. I ask each of you just to continue to pray. Um, I, want to read to you uh, tonight a portion of scripture found in the in the gospel of Luke. If you have your Bibles and like to turn with me, this passage of scripture uh, has just come on upon my mind a little earlier. I uh, had thought about some other passages and may end up turning to some of them as we go along, but try to follow the leadership of the spirit as he would guide us. Uh, if you have your Bibles, like uh, like to read in your hearing Luke chapter 10, beginning at verse 25, it says, And behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tempted him, saying, Master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? And he said unto him, What is written in the law? How readest thou? And he answering said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul, with all thy strength and with all thy mind, and thy neighbor as thyself. And he said unto him, Thou hast answered right, this do and thou shalt live. But he willing to justify himself said unto Jesus, and who is my neighbor? Jesus answering said, a certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves, which stripped him of his raiment and wounded him and departed, leaving him half dead. By chance there came down a certain priest that way. And when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. And likewise, a Levite, when he was at the place, came and looked on him and passed by on the other side. 
But a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was. And when he saw him, he had compassion on him and went to him and bound up his wounds, pouring in oil and wine and set him on his own beast and brought him to an inn and took care of him. And on the morrow, when he departed, he took out two pence, gave them to the host and said unto him, take care of him and whatsoever thou spendest more when I come again, I will repay thee. Which now these three thinkest thou was neighbor unto him that fell among the thieves. And he said, he that showed mercy on him, then said Jesus unto him, go and do thou likewise. This particular passage reminds me of the great need that you and I are in according to nature, where we stand before almighty God, if left in our own condition and our own selves and our own ability, or if we're dependent upon other men to help us out. What a, what a horrible state and condition we are in by nature. We know the Bible is very clear about that condition, that it's not one where this brother was along the side of the road half dead, but it's one in which we're completely dead. We're dead in trespasses and in sins. We're dead not because of something the Lord did, but because we have all sinned and come short of the glory of God, because we have a sinful nature. We inherited it from our father, Adam. And in Adam, there's no help or hope. And in me, there's no help or hope. And in you, there's no help or hope. But Thanks be to God, we had one who not only had the desire, not only had the will, but had the ability, driven by love, to do that for us, which we could not do for ourselves. This lawyer needed to learn that lesson. Uh, I don't know his condition. It doesn't sound like he's in a very good one. Because the scripture says, and behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tempted him. That's kind of a foolish thing to think you could do to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. He certainly had a high opinion of his intellect and his, of his ability, thinking that he could cause the Lord Jesus Christ to stumble in any way or shape or form. And many men tried to do that. There were those that would ask Jesus questions, and at times he wouldn't answer them at all, would not even acknowledge them. There was others who asked, asked questions and Jesus would answer them and he'd always answer them uh, absolutely correctly. Have you ever thought how many times we're asked questions that sometimes we ought to be quiet and not answer at all and then there are other times we try to answer and our answers are so insufficient and we fall so far short of really answering them in the right way. But the one that this a lawyer was talking to wasn't just any man. This was the word that was made manifest in the flesh. This was the one who was sent by his father here into this world. This was the one who in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God and all things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made. This was the one that was born and, and a man born there and lie, laid, laid in a manger. This was the one whom the angels were singing about. This was the one who the prophet Isaiah prophesied of. Uh, this is Emmanuel, God with us. This is the one called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. This is the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The angel told Joseph as as. Uh, the child was going to be born of Mary and Joseph, not understanding what was going on, was going to put away privately. But the angel told Joseph, fear not to take unto thee Mary uh, thy wife. And he went on and explained to her that thou, uh, unto him, that thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. This is the one that the father sent into this world. For God so loved the world. And that is the world of his elect people, that he sent his only begotten son into this world, 
Jesus came willingly into this world. And here he was walking upon the shores of time. And this lawyer came to him, stood up and tempted him, thinking that he was going to catch him up in something. He said, Master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? You know, there's a lot of people that think you have certain things to do to get eternal life or to inherit eternal life. But, but we know even by the laws of nature that inheritance is not something you do to get. In order to inherit something, you either have to be born into a family or you have to be adopted into the family. Uh, you ought to have to be the rightful heir of the inheritance in order to be able to get that. You can't just do something to get an inheritance. If I wanted somebody's money here in this world and I ask you, what do I do in order to inherit their money? They'd simply say, well, you can't do anything to inherit that money. You'd have to either be born in that family or you'd have to be uh, adopted into that family. And here's the wonderful thing about our eternal life. We have one that not only are we born into the family, but we're also adopted into the family. We belong in the family because in a, we were chosen in him even before the very foundation of the world. The eternal inheritance that we await is not going to be based on anything that we could do or anything we fail to do. And Jesus answered him maybe in what we might think is a peculiar way, but it's not at all because Jesus never answered anything in a peculiar way. His answer was perfect. He pointed him right to the law. He said, he said this to him. He said, what is written in the law? How readest that? You know, in order to be able to live with the Lord in heaven, you have to have a righteousness that uh, it exceeds the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees. You have, to, you have to have a righteousness that is perfect. You have to be one who keeps the law, keeps it perfectly. You have to have that kind of righteousness. Well, where would that put us? I'll tell you where it puts me tonight. I've come short of the glory of God and everything that I've ever tried to do. I, I, even in my best efforts, even on my very best day, if I had to stand before the Lord tonight and and be accepted based on how good I've done anything, or right? even when I'm trying to do good, much less the many times I've gone the other direction. If I had to depend upon my own self, I would have no, and, and should have no any, I'd have no confidence at all that I would be accepted in any way with the Lord. And I have good, I have news for you tonight. Some of it you might think is, ba is bad news, but in reality, it's good news. All of us are in the same condition. The Apostle Paul in Ephesians 2 didn't tell us about a, 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 a some people that were in trouble. He said, we were all by nature the children of wrath, even as others. We've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. There's none good, no, not one. We, we, are, we, are, we, we have nothing good in us. We have no desire to turn to God, no will to turn to God. We have no ability uh, in and of ourselves. But here's the good news. The good news is that we have a Savior and that came into this world to save sinners, as the apostle Paul said, of whom I am chief. And he goes on and he says, what is written in the law and how readest thou? And this good lawyer, uh, thinking he, and it's probably his own self-righteousness, thinking he had the answer to this question and maybe feeling like he was doing it, said this. And he answering said, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy strength and with all thy mind and thy neighbor as thyself. Well, somebody might say, well, that's not too much to do. That'd be pretty easy to follow. Oh, dear ones, you know what, it, what loving God is all about? It's about loving, if we love the Lord and if we love the Lord's people, it's about uh, loving God and keeping his commandments. It's about looking to him. It's about leaning upon him. And by nature, none of us even have any love to love him with because love is a fruit of the spirit. In order to love, you got to have love to love with. In order for me to love God, I have to, I have, to have uh, the spirit of almighty God in my heart giving me the love that I have for God, uh, for God. And in order to love the Lord's people, I have to have the spirit of almighty God to be able to love the Lord's people. And how do I know when I love the Lord's people? When I love God and I keep his commandments. So it comes right back to this. Oh, I want to love him more tonight. Don't you? Even when I love him, I feel so far short. Tonight, I, I feel to some degree to be thankful for what the Lord has done for me. 
but I want you to know when it really gets down to what he really has done for me, I'm not near thankful enough. And I want to be more thankful. I want to be more appreciative. And that's one reason I come to meetings like this, that I might hear more about what the Lord has done for me, more about his mercy, more about his love, more about his grace, more of, of all that he's done for me, that I might love him more and that I might want to live more and, 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 and walk more and behave more in a way to bring honor and glory to his name. Brethren, when we find that kind of, of relationship and fellowship with our Lord here in this world. It's a little heaven here below. It's a heavenly place in Christ. Tonight, I just don't want to sit in, a, in front of a computer and look at a, at a computer screen. I want to feel the manifest presence of my Lord. I want to feel him hold me. I want to feel his, I want to hear his voice. I, I, want to, I want to hear the truth of his word that he loves me. And I want to see that and feel that. And, 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 by the, and, and we do that by the power of the Holy Spirit. Do it when we sing the hymns, when we hear the, the prayers, when we, when we hear the expressions of God's little children, hearing that little girl just say amen, uh, makes, it just makes my heart rejoice because it gives me a, a, a peace and a rest in my heart tonight that I might be like that one who was in the, on the side of the road here. And, and he, had, he, had fought, he had gone from, Jer from Jerusalem to Jericho. That's the way... That's the way we've had it in our life, away from the things of God. When left on our own, we go away from them. And here, going from the city of God to a, an evil, wicked city, and there he fell among thieves. That's what you'll find in this world. And they were, and he was stripped of his raiment, and he was wounded, and he was he, he was departed. They departed from him, and they left him half dead. And that's where we are tonight. That's our condition. Sounds like we need a lot of help, <laughs> and we do. And I'm telling you, there's one who is able to help us. There's one who is able to deliver us. There's one who, uh, who has the will to do it and the love to do it and the mercy to do it and the ability to do it and, and, and the power to do it. And that's what we're talking about, that, that one. He said, love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy strength and with all thy mind and thy neighbor as thyself. Brethren, we all come far short of, of doing this. Should we desire to do it? It ought to be I want to to do it and to do it better. But even on our best day, we're going to come short of that. You know what the law will tell you as you go to the law? It'll show you what a sinner you are. What does the law tell us? It tells the Jew uh, that he's not able uh, to keep that law in order to, uh, to be righteous before Almighty God, that he's, he's not to trust in, the, in, in his own ability. It tells the Gentile he's in the same boat. We all are in the same condition that if we were left to ourselves, we're without any hope in this world. But the good news is this. There was one who was able to come and do all of this. You know who, who did love the Lord? The, his God with all his heart and with all his soul, with all his strength and with all his mind. Do you know who loved every neighbor as himself? Do you know who walked perfectly in this world? Do you know who one, one who kept the law to every jot and every tittle and did not in any way fail or come short of keeping the law of God? Over there in John chapter one, it tells this, and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory. That is in first John. Uh, the, uh, John chapter 1 and verse 14, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, and he was full of grace and truth. You know, when Pilate looked at him from the top of his head to the bottom of his feet, he had to confess, I can find no fault in him. You know why he couldn't find any fault in him? Because there was none. There was none. No, the, all the fault was on Pilate's side. It wasn't in Jesus. And I'm telling you, they, they, they unjustly judged him. They, they found him in their minds guilty, but he was not guilty. And yet he bore that. He, he endured that. He suffered that. Why would he do that? I'm telling you, the word was made flesh, and he was made flesh for a reason. It's because you and I, uh, as flesh and bone, and, and as his children had fallen into a state of sin and separation from God, and there was no answer for our case except for one to come in our room instead and live as one of us. He dwelt among us. He, he, we beheld his glory, and he had the glory as, as of the only begotten of the Father. He was the only begotten Son of God, and he came here and took upon himself a body of flesh. 
Yes, he was barely God, but he was also barely man. He had to be our mediator. And in order to be our mediator, in order to be our substitute, he had to be one of us. He had to, he had to walk among us. And he couldn't just walk anyway. He had to be perfect. He never spoke a word that shouldn't be spoken. He never took a step that should not have been taken. He never thought a thought that should not have been thought. Uh, what Jesus did was perfect uh, from the beginning to the end, all the way, even uh, from, the, from the cradle to the cross, Jesus walked a perfect life. And when he died, he offered himself a perfect sacrifice. And that's where he had everything in him that we needed. And here we see a picture of that. It says, but he willing to justify himself said unto Jesus, and who is my neighbor? He, Jesus said unto him, thou hast answered right, this do and thou shalt live. You see, this man was full of his own self-righteousness, but Jesus was about to call him out. Have you ever had the Lord call you out? <laughs> oh, brethren, many times I sat in a congregation and had the preacher call me out. Really wasn't the preacher. It was the Lord who blessed the preacher to call me out. Isn't it good when the Lord blesses the preacher to say something sometimes that may step on your toes or cause you to uh, uh, cause you to think or, or, or wake you up? Sometimes we get in our old nature, we get a little aggravated or maybe a little upset about that. Listen, brethren, be thankful. If you feel the chastisement of Almighty God, that's a great evidence that you belong to him, that you're his. And when we can be corrected, you know, I, I felt like uh, I felt like sometimes uh, when I've heard some brethren preach uh, and they they just seem like they hit my toes, get up on my ankles, maybe all of my I feel like they ought to hand out band aids at the end of the service because I feel uh, all beat up. But listen, he, they do in a sense hand out those band aids. There is comfort in the fact that Jesus loved me enough that He would correct me and, and instruct me and teach me and show me. And there's so many times that I've thought, oh, boy, I'm right in the right place, doing the right thing. And Jesus calls you out. And he does that sometimes maybe in the voice of a minister. It may be in a little brother or a little sister. It may be in, in, in one that seemed to be the farthest away from you. But it, our Lord moves in mysterious ways, his wonders to perform. Aren't you glad he deals with you providentially? I'm glad I can look through my life and see the times that he's just dealt with me, particularly and in special ways. It just gives me a great comfort and a peace and a consolation tonight to feel that I'm one of his. And he says, and he willing to justify himself said unto Jesus, and who is my neighbor? And Jesus gives us this wonderful lesson, this, this beautiful passage of scripture uh, to teach us a practical lesson, but also to point to such a wonderful truth, a gospel truth of what he did for his people. Jesus answering said, a certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves, which stripped him of his raiment and wounded him and departed, leaving him half dead. And by chance there came down a certain priest that way. And when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. Can you picture that brother over in the ditch? Can you see him over there? Here the, the, the priest came through and all he had for him, one probably representing the law, uh, whether it's a ceremonial law, the moral law, uh, whatever it is, the law, the law will never bring us out of the state uh, uh, and meet the needs that we have. Uh, there's no answer for us in the law uh, to where we can feel at peace and have fellowship with God. Uh, the, the law couldn't do it for us and the law wouldn't do it for us. It says, and by chance, there came down a certain priest that way. And when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. And likewise, a Levite, when he was at the place, came and looked on him. He looked at him and passed by on the other side. But then we get to that beautiful picture here, but a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was. Listen, tonight I think about our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ coming where we were. I read over in Galatians chapter four. It says in uh, the fourth verse of Galatians chapter four, it says, but when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his son. Here's that word. And, and why did the word come? Because the father sent him. And it wasn't in, in an, it wasn't any disagreement. Uh, it, was a, it was a covenant of grace made in before the very foundation of the world between God the Father and God the Son and God the Holy Spirit. And God sent at the appointed time of the Father when the fullness of time was come. Uh, the word was made manifest uh, in the flesh. And G God came. Jesus came. God sent forth his son. Emmanuel, God with us. 
and he was made of a woman and he was made under the law and he came for a purpose. You see, there was, a, there was those of his children in the ditch. There was a reason for him to come. He wasn't, he wasn't like the Levite and he wasn't like the priest who, who came and saw us and left us there. He came where we were. It says, it says he came, he was made of a woman and made under the law and he came to do something. He came to redeem them that were under the law that, that we might receive the adoption of sons. Isn't it wonderful tonight that we might feel to be his son because he predestinated us to be conformed to the image of his son. Uh, he predestinated us, us, us unto the adoption of children uh, by Jesus Christ unto himself. He says to redeem them that were under the law that we might receive the adoptions of sons. And because ye are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. Tonight, we can call upon him as our father, not just as our father, but Abba, Father, our close, intimate father. Yes, we approach him. We should come as, the, as we've heard uh, taught to us uh, in, in that prayer as he taught us how to pray. Uh, hallowed be thy name. We ought to reverence his name and holy is his name. We should not be flippant in our prayers. We should not uh, talk to our, to our Lord as if, uh, as if he's uh, without the reverence that, that should be there. We should acknowledge that. But all oh, dear ones, isn't it wonderful tonight that even when you don't know what to say and the words are not there and your heart is so broken and you don't know what to ask for and you don't know which way to turn and you feel so far from him that you still have one that you can go to uh, and, and, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, you can pray and ask him as our heavenly father and we call upon him as Abba Father. You know, we couldn't approach him were it not for the, the mediation and the intercession that's being made for us by our darling Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Had he not paid the sin debt, he, had he not come here in this world and taken in his own body our sins and nailed them to the tree of the cross and removed them from us as far as the east is from the west and paid the price that we could not pay and would not pay and did not have the ability to pay, but he paid it all. And he came to redeem them that were under the law. And I say to you tonight, he did that. He redeemed them that were under the law. That we might receive the adoption of sons. And because you are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. Wherefore, thou art no more a servant, but a son. And if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. I think of that dear prodigal son when he returned uh, to his uh, father's house. He said, Father, I am no more worthy to be called thy son. He had spent his living and riot, his, his substance in riotous living, had been out there uh, in the, out, out in the world. And, and no doubt he, he was in an awful shape when he came home. But when he came home, his father saw him coming afar off and he ran and meet him and met him. He had compassion on him. And when he brought him in there, uh, when the son spoke and he said, uh, make me as well. He didn't say make me as one of thy hired servants. You see, he wasn't a hired servant. He was a son. And I'm telling you, the Lord not only brought us back to the house, he brought us back as sons. We are, we are his, we are heirs of God and joint heirs with the Lord Jesus Christ. He's given us a ring to wear on our finger to show that we're a son. He's given us shoes to put on our feet, to walk like his sons. He's given us the best robe to wear, to cover up our nakedness. Listen, he met our needs just like the Samaritan. Uh, the good Samaritan met the needs of this one. Uh, the Lord Jesus Christ is that good Samaritan for us that meets our needs. But a certain Samaritan, Samaritan as he journeyed, he came where he was. Aren't you glad the Lord loved us enough to come where we were? I love to think about that. Yes, he was a little baby and he was born in a manger, but we focus so much on that sometimes we forget to remember that he lived in this world so that he might die. He grew up, he walked a perfect life and there at Calvary, he died a death that was necessary and gave his life that you and I might live. He paid the price and God forbid we would ever say anything that would take away from that finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ. What he did, he did for every one of his children and all of them will receive the benefit of what he did uh, because he did not fail, cannot fail, and will not fail. And that's the one we're looking to tonight. He came where we were and he says, and, and when he saw him, he had compassion on him. You know, what if the Lord had just seen us and would not have had compassion on us? 
Now, the Lord had compassion on his people, those that he chose, an innumerable company out of every nation, out of every kindred, out of every tongue, and out of every people, a number that no man can number. And he loved them. And he loved them in particular. He loved them and he, and he, and he died for them in, in particular. And that was his people. Uh, his name shall be called Jesus for he shall save his people from their sins. It wasn't everybody's sins that he paid for so that he might have somebody. It was his people that he paid their sin debt. He, he, he has washed us in his own precious blood. And, and that work was an effectual work. And he offered himself not to man, but once unto God. That sacrifice has been accepted. And he has everything that we need to, to, to not only come where we are, but to, to bring us out of the place we're in and lead us to a place uh, that he has a, a force and he supplies everything that's needed here. It says he, he went to him and he bound, he said he had compassion on him and he went to him. Listen, he comes to every one of his little children somewhere between conception and death. All of us here the voice of the, of the Lord Jesus Christ. He doesn't leave that up to the preacher to do. He doesn't leave that up to any other man to do. He effectually calls. As many as he foreknew, he predestinated. As many as he predestinated them, he, he, he calls each and every one of them. And that call is an effectual call by the power of the Holy Spirit. The hour is coming and now is when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God and they that hear shall live. John 5 and 25 tells us of an effectual call. He came where he was. And when he saw him, he had compassion on him and he went to him and he bound up his wounds. You may feel wounded tonight, but I want you to know there's one who says, come unto me, all ye that labor and heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. There's one that you can look to tonight. And, and if you have the desire to look to you to him, it's the Lord who gave you the desire. If you have the ability to see him, it's the Lord who gives you the ability. If you love him, it's because he first loved you. All of it comes from him. And brethren, uh, to all of him, to him, does uh, all the glory belongs unto him. And he says he, he came where he was and he, and he poured in, he said he poured in the oil and wine. And wine. He has the medicine I need. Have you found that tonight? He's got, you know, that's what he's got the medicine I need. Jesus, he's he's all I need. Like the little little girl that was quoting the 23rd Psalm, she misquoted it and says, The Lord is my shepherd, and that's all I uh, and that's all I want, you know. <laughs> In other words, I, he he answers all my needs. And isn't that what that psalm is all about, really? He he answers all my needs, whatever my needs are. Listen, I, I, I'm wounded, but he's my friend. Who, who's man, He's my great physician. I'm in the dark, but he's my light. I lack wisdom, but he's the wisdom of God, the manifest wisdom of God. I, I need strength. He's my strength. He's my help. He's my all in all. And, and brethren, when we come together and we are able to look to him together as God's little children, we will find every time the things that we truly stand in need of because he pours in the oil and wine. Tonight, how many times have you come to a meeting and had him pour in the oil and wine? You hear a preacher preach. You know why that preacher can preach? The Lord blesses him to preach. The Lord gives him the ability to preach. The Lord gives him what he has to give you. If you got anything from him, it's God who gave you that which he has. And if you're able to feed it, feed on it and hear it, and how many times has that been a blessing to us? It's because of what the Lord has done. It's because the word was made manifest in the flesh. And Jesus is seated on the right hand of God, making intercession for us tonight. And I believe he's right here with us in this little meeting. He's promised where two or three are gathered together that he's one in our midst. And I'm so thankful to believe that. And that means whatever I face tomorrow, and I don't know what's coming. I'll tell you, we live in a mixed up world, don't we? You never know what's coming. You don't know what's coming on the political arena. You don't know what's coming on the economic arena. You don't know what's coming in America or anywhere else. But I'm telling you tonight, our God, Jesus Christ, our Lord will not change. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And the one who's helped us uh, along life's way will continue to help us. Uh, he will never leave us nor forsake us. And you and I can trust and depend upon him. And he says, pouring in oil and wine, and he set him on his own beast. 
you know, the blessings that I have are not the blessings I've earned. It's the ones who've been given to me by Almighty, by my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The righteousness we have is the righteousness of Christ given to us. The things we, we are enjoying in this world are the blessings that not that we deserve, but he earned them and merited them. And he has given, to, um, um, given them unto us by his grace. But listen, he's the one who has worked those things for us. He's the one who's paid that price. And, and isn't it wonderful to know he's rich? <laughs> when he shows you mercy, he still has as much mercy as he had before. When he, when he shows you love, he still has as much love as he had before. When he, when he pours it out upon you, he still has as much as he had before because he's the one. He, he doesn't have to go get a, a supply somewhere else. He's an in, inexhaustible supply of mercy and grace and love and all that we stand in need of. And he brought him to an end and took care of him. I feel like I'm sitting in an end tonight. I feel like I'm sitting among God's little children in an end. And I feel like I'm under the watch care of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I hope and pray we can all feel that tonight. He's shown his love to us. He's given us a heart and a desire to be here. He's given us a hunger for his word. He's the one who's carried us to this end. He's the one who's built the end, made it there and given it, uh, supplied everything that was there. And, and he, he goes on and proves that. He says, and on the morrow, when he departed, he took out two pence and gave them to the host and said unto him, take care of him. Oh, I'm telling you, that's what the Lord's commandments are to God's ministry. We are to, we are to feed the flock of God, whom the Lord has made us overseers, uh, and not to, not to lord over them, but to be, uh, we're be, to be diligent to preach the word. How do we feed them? We feed them with the wholesome words of the Lord Jesus Christ. We desire wholesome words. How do we know when our words are wholesome? When we have a thus saith the Lord, when we're preaching Jesus Christ and him crucified, when we're using God's word, God's written word, and we're looking to the power of the Holy Spirit to bless us, to be able to have liberty to preach and to feed God's little lambs and God's little sheep. We're acting as those hosts that the Lord has given us all that we need to take care of them. If we try to take care of them on our own, we'll mess up. Brethren, we need to look to the Lord. I'm thankful for these fellow laborers that we have, uh, that I have in here in this world. I love them, and I love their desire to feed God's little children, their concern, and their love for God's little children. But I know where that comes from. Uh, for every one of them that have that, it's been given to them by a calling, given to them by Almighty God. And I thank the Lord for them. And we need to always remember who the praise belongs to. It always belongs to the Lord. And he says, he says this, and take care of him. That's what the Lord says. Listen, that's what he says to us as ministers. We got to take care of him. Sometimes, you know, you ever get you ever get to dealing with the Lord's people. And I know when the when others are dealing with me, I'm sure there's times they say, Well, I'm just gonna give up on that old boy. I'll tell you what, he's too hard-headed for me to talk to. He's he's he he just won't listen. He's just he uh, and, and you know he he wants to he wants it listen we have a duty and a responsibility god's children have a duty and a responsibility to do unto god's little children as the lord has done unto us that is what the love of god is all about that's what loving your neighbor is all about how uh, we're to be as the lord has been to us Sometimes we'll look and say, well, I don't think they deserve it. The answer isn't, do they deserve it? We know what we deserve. None of us deserve any good thing, but the Lord has been so good to us. And because the Lord has been, this is what we're to be to one another. This is the lesson that he's teaching us. As he has forgiven us, we're to forgive one another. As he is to love us, we're to love one another. As he has done good unto us, we're to do good unto one another. And, and this is, is how you love the children of God when we love God and keep his commandments. And he goes on and he says, he says, and take care of him and whatsoever thou spendest more when I come again, I will repay thee. I'll tell you what, God's little children that take care of God's little children are taken care of by the Lord. They'll never, they, you'll never be, you'll never lose by doing what the Lord has told you to do. You'll never, you'll never come up short. You'll always be taken care of. You'll, you'll, you'll always gain more than you ever give. Isn't that something? 
you know, it's 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 like God has so so richly blessed us, and I think how little it's really cost me in my life. Yes, there's been some cost. There is some cost, and there's going to be some cost. But that cost just is so so very little in light of the blessings that are found in walking in obedience to the Lord. That so far is above any of the little thing, and really the things we lose are things we can't keep anyway. You know, <laughs> the things we lose are things you can't hold on any to anyway, and the things you gain can't be taken from you. How the the moths and 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 rust, it, it, it's a treasure laid up in a heavenly place that will not and cannot be taken away from. You. Don't tell me tonight that dear little brother Ned who can't be on this line and be here listening to this meeting like he would be and has been isn't feeding on some of those precious things in his in the, in the blessed memories and the blessed the things he's had in his life uh, and, and what the Lord has given him uh, heavenly treasures that he's feeding on tonight. And I've seen that among God's little children and have felt it in my own life. And I'll tell you what the Lord has so richly blessed us with. Don't, don't we all have so much to, we could say, the Lord has been so good to me. I want to praise his name. And he said unto them, he said, and I will repay that. And then he asked the question of this, uh, this lawyer. He says, which now of these three thinkest thou was neighbor unto him that fell among the thieves? Which one looked like Jesus? <laughs> there you go. Which one did? Which one acted like Jesus did towards us? That's the question. And he said, "He that showed mercy on him." Isn't that a picture of our Lord Jesus? He shown mercy on me tonight. How about you, brother? How about you, sister? Has he shown mercy to you? And he said, "Then said Jesus unto him." And this is the lesson for us: Go and do thou likewise. That's putting on the shoes. That's the shoes that the, the prodigal son was given at his father's house. That's wearing the gospel. That's doing what the Lord would have you to do. Not in order to get to be something. He was already a son. It's just an identifying mark. When God's little children let their light so shine before men that others see their good, good works and it glorifies their father, which is in heaven. It makes them look like a little child of God. It gives glory to their heavenly father. It gives glory to the father. Of the, it, it gives glory to God. Brethren, that's what our lives, we should desire that it would be all about. Not in order that we might be something, but that we might point to him as our everything. When you have a mind to pray, remember me and God bless you. Thank you, Elder Roots. We certainly are thankful to the Lord uh, for your message, thankful for your ministry. Um, it's, it's good to see uh, in all of the whole Bible, the great mercy of God, the great mercy of God. Uh, he is a God full of compassion, full of mercy. It says in the 86th Psalm, I believe it is, but thou, O Lord, art God full of compassion, gracious, long-suffering, plenteous in mercy and in truth. So, um, uh, you know, the Lord's give us some instructions here. And it says, um, go and do thou likewise. Go and do thou likewise. <laughs> what, a, what a better world this would be. <laughs> what a better town. What a better household it would be. If we had that opinion, go and do thou likewise to have compassion and mercy on those. Um, I'm thankful that the Lord had compassion on us. I'm thankful that his mercy endureth forever. It's like you said uh, in one part of your sermon that uh, when he shows mercy on some, he doesn't run out of mercy that he can't show it on others because uh, he's plenteous in mercy and in truth. It just never runs out. And he's never slacks at giving it. So uh, praise God for that. Praise God for that. So uh, mm. we'd like to publish the doors of the church open here for the reception of members. If there's any that would like to have a home, you desire a home here, uh, let it be known uh, before we depart here as we close with the singing of a hymn. Brother Kevin, what number? 
Brother Eddie, we turn to the Lord has been so good to me. It's 277 and 262 in the 12th edition. 277 and 262. The Lord has been so good to me. I want to sing His praise. I want to glorify His name. All my remaining days. The Lord has been so good to me. I will on Him. say that the Lord has been so good to me. Does anyone have any announcements that they'd like to make? Yes, Brother Andy, I just want to invite you all to be with us this weekend. Um, we'll be online both Saturday and Sunday. Thank you, Elder Nichols. We will pass that along. Any other announcements? Well, I hope and trust that uh, we'll continue to pray for one another, pray for those that are sick and cast down, uh, pray for the next time that we'll be able to meet uh, and mingle with a portion of the Lord's people uh, while here on this earth, that we would be strengthened up in the things that the Lord has done for us. 
Uh, we've heard it tonight, Matthew 121, and he shall save his people from their sins. And Jesus saved his people from their sins, uh, that we would rejoice evermore in that finished work of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Um, well, with no other announcement, we'll ask Elder Nichols if he'd close us with a prayer. Elder Nichols. Uh, let us pray. <clears throat> Gracious Heavenly Father, we do thank thee, dear God, for the blessings of this night. We thank thee, love, dear God, that thou hast blessed us indeed to bestow that love which thou hast bestowed upon us. We thank thee for that darling son. We thank thee for this fellowship, dear God, that thou hast blessed us this night to come under the hearing of the gospel, to rejoice and give praise to thee for all that thou hast done. And merciful Heavenly Father, as we go our separate ways, be with us, we pray. Bless us, dear God, to walk like thee, to walk like thy darling son, that we may indeed might take this scripture tonight as a lesson, as a life lesson as to how we, as thy people, ought to behave and ought to carry ourselves as we sojourn in this time world. Be merciful, dear God, we pray, glorifying thy name in each and every heart, for thy name's sake. For we ask these things in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Elder Nichols. It's been a pleasure to be here, brother. Good to see you tonight. Appreciate you. Appreciate that prayer. God bless you. God bless you too, brother. Brother Eddie, I spoke to Brother Mike tonight, and he said that um, he's been having some trouble with his shoulder and neck. It's been keeping him awake at night with arthritis in his shoulder. Brother Mike Goody. Okay, thank you for letting me know that. Elder Oots, good to see you tonight. We hope and trust that uh, your son will get a negative report back. Please keep him in your prayers. and We will. Uh, I, I do appreciate that so much and appreciate you mentioning him and Brother Brammer and all our folks up here in your prayers. Yeah. Uh, we love y'all. Love you. Uh, look forward to the time we can. I we think can Alabama. Pray. God bless you. Yes, sir. Yes, Not sir. Positive. God bless brother you. Gary, enjoy that preaching, brother. And sweet prayer, Brother John. Uh, praise pleasure. God. Thank God bless you, brother. Amen. God bless you. Merry Christmas to you all. Same to you. Merry Christmas. I enjoyed it. God bless. Bye-bye. God bless. Bye-bye. Bye, brother Gary. Bye, Bye brother Ross. Oh, it's been so good to me. <laughs> Good night. Y'all have a good evening. It's good to see you tonight. Chaney's have a good night. Appreciate you leading us in those hymns. Good night. Good night. Good night. Hey, Miriam. Bye. Bye. Good to see you all. Merry Christmas to everybody. <laughs>